my name is John Crawford. I'm here from the Woodland Trust. I'm a conservation evidence officer. Uh, and I'm really excited to be sharing some news about the, the exciting research collaboration that we've started uh, with teams from the University of Leeds and the University of York. Uh, these are a fantastic team of world-class researchers that are helping us understand the impacts of our uh, habitat restoration and woodland creation project here at Snay's Home, helping us understand the impacts on, on water quality and water flows, mitigating some of the risks around uh, flood events that we'll see from increased storms, as well as understanding some of the impacts on soils, how carbon and nutrients are stored and cycled in the system. Uh, this is a really unique opportunity for the Woodland Trust to get involved in the cutting edge research um, and help, help us understand the impact of the work that we're doing. So I'm Rob Mills, I'm a lecturer at the University of York and I'm principally interested in soil ecology, so all the organisms that live in the soil. And when we plant the trees out here on the landscape, we're expecting that the system's going to change in terms of what goes on below ground. And crucially, we don't have a good understanding of the organisms that currently live in the system and how that might change. But what we're expecting is that when we change the plant material that's coming in and the roots and the root in depth that's growing into the soil, we might see changes to organic matter cycling and nutrient cycling, but also the way the soil organisms change the structure of the soil. It's a very continuous colour of grey. We don't have strong layering in this top 20, 30 centimetres or so. So that's telling us that the soil is quite uh, well cycled over by the organisms that are living in there. Uh, so it's probably quite a rich, fertile bit of ground. But these little stains that you can see, these little orange stains on the soil, especially down the bottom there, that's basically rust. So this is telling us that water moves up and down this soil quite a lot, which is not surprising because we're on this slope and there's water moving through. And this is telling us that at certain times the soil is without oxygen and then at other times it's with oxygen. And that's really important for how water flows through the system. And as we can see, it's pretty wet and water moving through the soil and water being stored in the soil is going to be a big part of how this system responds uh, to flood events. So we're going to be following uh, the biology of the soil, so we're going to be measuring the microbes that live in the soil uh, using DNA methods and we're going to measure what they do. So we're going to measure the cycling of carbon, this kind of thing, to really get a new understanding. And we're going to follow this for many years to come to see how the forest changes the ecosystem. Yeah, so we already know over the last few decades here there's been already an increase in storm events and the intensity of those storm events over the last few decades and we're expecting over the next 30 or 40 years about a 20 to 50 percent increase in uh, the intensity of winter storms uh, in this area and so that's going to make you know the changes that we're seeing here even more important um, in terms of trying to reduce that downstream flood risk. Yeah, one of the really important things is that we're going to be able to get measurements before a lot of the trees go in. So recording how the site is changing over time is really crucial. A lot of previous studies you've compared you know, woodlands to unwooded areas and that gives you some really important information but we don't really get that information about how quickly some of the flood mitigation benefits of woodlands develop and that's one of the really exciting things we want to answer here at Snay's Home is how you know, as the trees grow, how do those flood benefits grow uh, along with the trees really. Um, so trees kind of can reduce that flooding in a, in a few different ways. Um, one way is through um, you know, intercepting the, the, the rain in a big storm event so their leaves will, will capture some of that rain and prevent that getting into the, into the stream. So that can reduce flooding. But that's probably going to take a bit of time. Other ways it could happen really quickly is that the vegetation structure under the trees, the ground vegetation will change um, and that can slow the, the flow of water over the ground and that could be a, um, a big benefit that could happen quite quickly so it's going to be exciting to see those changes you know, happen in, in a you know even a few years probably after that. We're going to walk up here now and look for sort of places, uh, pools in the water where we can fit, fit our uh, monitoring equipment in and basically what that, um, how that works is it records the, the depth of the water in the pool um, and during a storm event when there's more water in, in the stream that depth of that pool um, gets deeper 
and then we can calculate the, the flow of water in the stream based on that, that depth of water. Hi, I'm Alec Pugh, uh, site manager here at Snay's Home for the Woodland Trust. Uh, so I'm overseeing all the habitat restoration work that we have underway here. So that includes, um, you know, woodland creation, it includes um, peatland restoration, limestone uh, pavement sort of restoration, riverside meadow work. So a whole mosaic of habitats that we do have here um, that we're looking to restore here. Yeah, and we're here today with the, with the researchers from Lees, York and uh, some Woodland Trust staff here. Um, and yeah, it's really exciting to have them here and work, working with them on this, on this project, um, especially for me as a site manager here to, to see what our actions are here. So the interventions that we do put into place to understand what the results of our actions are and then help, help guide and shape our management going forward. The project here is funded through the Trees of Climate and the White Rose Forest. That funding is also supporting the research that we're here looking at today and making a start on today. So as well as, uh, for me, understanding what, what we're doing on the, on the site at Snay's Home and how the research ties in with that and guides our management, it's also really exciting to, to understand what Snay's Home can be for the wider landscape. So the research that's happening here and the results that we get from that research could hopefully help sort of shape other land use elsewhere. Right, we have to play a game now. <laughs> Guess the temperature of the air. So as part of the work we're doing here at Snay's Home, um, we're also installing a wide range of scientific equipment to help, help us understand uh, some of the kind of key environmental variables. So the team of researchers behind me are, are currently installing uh, one of the weather stations that we're, we're using on site. And this will allow us to detect um, a wide range of environmental data. So this is an Atmos weather station, compact weather station, no moving parts, which is pretty cool. And we're able to measure Rainfall, so this is a tipping bucket uh, replacement, so it doesn't have any moving parts in it anymore. And what it does in fact have, if I open it up, is just in there you can see, you may be able to see there's two small pieces of gold, uh, gold plated sil uh, steel. And as the raindrop falls through this thing, it makes a contact between the two pieces of gold and then that registers uh, as a rain event. They're in the north, so I don't know where it should face. Oh, I'd have no chance. So underneath here we've got some sound sensors and what they're doing is they're sending sound waves to this small PTFE disc that you can see here. They then bounce back up, but of course as the air blows across it pushes uh, the gases across here which moves the sound in different directions and at different speeds. So it's able to compute which direction the wind is coming from and how fast the wind is moving. So that's really cool, so we can see in three dimensions. There's also just in here a little space for air to move up into the sensor so we can measure humidity and pressure. And then this tiny piece of metal sticking down is measuring temperature, so we've got air temperature. And then inside, the pièce de résistance, I guess, is the <laughs> AM frequency radio, which is sending out radio waves all around and is able to detect storms, so specifically lightning strikes, very exciting. So I'm Robin Wrigley and I'm a research assistant working at the University of Leeds um, and so part of what I do is working on the monitoring on this on the whole Snay's Home project and uh, one really exciting thing about this project is the scale that it's on. It's on a much bigger scale um, as a restoration point of view from what has been done before um, and so it's kind of it's presenting its own challenges in, in trying to kind of work out and figure out how best for us to to monitor that and, and really capture the changes that are gonna gonna happen with, with tree planting and, and the effect of all of that on every part of the system that is in this landscape. Uh, I've been working on landscape restoration for the past year, I've gone into my second year, and really this is a really exciting site to start kind of looking into this because I just don't think people realise how little data there is from the beginning of planting as trees grow. A lot of our data has kind of been based off of Kind of this time for space approach where 
you look at what a mature woodland's like, you look at what a planted woodland's like, you look at what a control of what it might have been is like. So we really don't know this kind of change over time and what's happening. So it's really exciting to have this massive site. It's one of the biggest reforestation sites in the whole of England. And you've got so many different like, things that you can start looking into. So when you're kind of starting to kind of trying to think about what's going to happen here and how the niches are going to develop and how different habitats and vegetation is going to respond when it's planted here, what's going to survive, what's going to thrive, how that the roots are going to affect the soil is really, really interesting. And I think it's just a really cool site and it's going to be going for 50 years or so, hopefully. So we're going to keep researching here. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens. <laughs>